Hey you um YouTube it's uh Zenin's gig again. Um just wanted to do a quick review of my latest purchase which is the Keltec SUC16. The C stands for Charlie. Um this is actually a 223 carbine. Um much like an AR15. It's you know it's ideal for those who always wanted say an AR15 but could not you know come up with the cash for it much like myself so this is kind of an AR-15 but on a budget which is always good we like budgets especially with this economy um, the um, the SU-16 is a very flexible weapon um, here I'm showing it to you guys in its folded state um, the the actual um, stock here folds under and the magazine can actually go through the stock depending on the thickness of the magazine. This ma particular magazine is the um, Kamenga 20 round. It fits right through. Um, here you have your, um, your mag release on the weapon. Um, on the top here it comes with a standard military Picatinny rail and the fore end is a standard foreign and it has some nice checkered grooves here. It also has um, a rear sight, iron sight, and also a front sight, which is pretty accurate. Um, I went ahead and made um, slight changes to mine. Um, I added a couple of accessories, as you can see, and I'll get into that. First, I want to show you um, just how dynamic this, um, this little carbine is. Um, as you see here, you can have it in a folded state, and yes, it does fire in a folded state, so you can actually use it, say, like a, you know, a pistol. Um, much like the PLR-16 or, you know, the AK-47 pistol, you can pretty much use it the same way. It's very compact. In its extended state, um, or fully expanded state, it, the, the full length of the rifle is about 35 inches. When it's folded like this, it's 25 inches so it takes off roughly 10 inches off the overall length by just folding it. Um, for um, accuracy if you want to shoot with the stock all you have to do is just pull down like this and it folds out and I want to show it to you and it snaps into place just like that. Pretty solid, sturdy, doesn't bend, doesn't wobble, locks perfectly into place and then you know you can use it um, long range um, if you want even greater accuracy for let's say you know hunting or whatever um, the foreign let me show you right now doubles up as a bipod and all you have to do is go ahead and press these two little levers here you pull them down simultaneously they both have to be done at the same time and release and the foreign drops down and acts as a bipod. Uh, let me just um, see if I can show that to you. There you have it. That's with a bipod. Fully extended. So as you can see, it's you know it's a pretty versatile weapon. Um, to put the foreign back. All you have to do is just put it together like this, snap it into place. It locks into place with these two little buttons. To open it up again, you pull the buttons down and release it, and it opens up. Um, to fold the stock, all you have to do, there's a little lever here, which you could just press down with your tongue. When you press it down, you will see the, the stock drop a little, and all you have to do from there is just go ahead and fold it under. It locks into place. Um, as I stated before, the magazine can be removed and inserted when the stock is folded. Like I said, it only works with certain magazines, but I'll eject it right now and show it to you. comes out perfectly, and the stock is still folded. While the stock is folded, I can go ahead and just tilt the magazine a little bit and put it in place and it locks into place so it's ready to rock and roll um, this will not work with every magazine I'll show you another magazine that it won't work with which is the um, 
the Tapco 30 rounder, which is here, it will not work with this magazine doing it that way. So the stock has to be um, fully extended for it to work. Um, as far as the accessories that are on the rifle, I pretty much really didn't do anything to it. I put a, a red dot sight on the rifle that actually um, allows me to actually allows me to add a couple more accessories on top of the um, the sight itself. The red dot sight, or should I say red dot green dot sight, because it has both red and um, green um, um, sights. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It's um, it's really not that huge, as you can see right there. It mounts onto the um, the standard Picatinny rail, which comes on the rifle, and the actual um, sight itself red dot sight actually has three rails on it so there's a picatinny rail on the right on the top and also here on the left hand side um, on the top I mounted a flashlight the knob is kinda in the way but I'll still show it to you and that's the flashlight right there on top turns on and off by just flicking this little switch right here um, and then we have the laser which is on the side um, that is not obstructed by anything and you just simply tap the button it comes on and off um, as far as the actual sight goes I'm gonna try and see if I can get a close-up here so I can show you guys what it looks like so just bear with me okay there we go uh, this little knob here on the side turns it on so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put the, um, the, the green dot on and you'll notice it right there it looks like a little T um, and it has different intensity levels it gets lower and lower depending on what direction you turn it go back to zero it goes off as you see it's gone now we're gonna go with the red and it's kinda pale there but as you turn it intensifies as you can see right there and that's the red at, this is it at the highest intensity so that's the red dot um, to turn it back off you simply just turn the knob back to zero and you notice it's gone. When I put it back on green, there's the green right there. Um, the laser, you simply just tap this little switch here up and it goes. On the wall in the video, the, um, the laser looks like that little wet white dot right there. It doesn't really show up red, but it's a red dot laser. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty effective, pretty accurate. And as far as the flashlight is concerned, let me just turn that on and show you. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. Um, it's pretty easy to load, um, pretty easy to fire, has little or no recoil. It's a 223. It's not going to have the b biggest kick in the world. Um, but the 223 is a very devastating round. And it is perfect for, you know, whatever you want to use it for hunting, home defense. Um, this is my home defense weapon, so that's why I fitted it with a flashlight and a laser, you know, depending on what you're going to use the rifle for, you can fit it with, you know, a scope or a red dot sight, whatever you choose. But it's a flexible, um, it's pretty flexible um, carbine, and it'll run you, mine's ran me a little bit over 600, about 620, 630, somewhere around there. And it's definitely a cheap alternative to um, an AR-15. It's the Caltech SU-16. It's dependable, it's very reliable, and it is rugged and flexible. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's my review. Um, as far as this mag is concerned, I also did a video review on the mag, which is called the, um, the Kamenga Easy Mag. You may want to check that out. For those of you who own the SU-16 or an AR-15, it's a very innovative magazine, tough and it's reliable um, but that's it that's my um, video for the um, re video review for the Caltech SU16C Charlie please don't forget to subscribe to the videos also if you love guns and you know you want to meet other people who are interested in guns don't forget to check out www.gunbook.net and uh, for the people who are watching this on YouTube I will include the um, the link to gunbook.net as um, 
as well as um, some information on where you can get these accessories. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found this information useful. Goodbye.